Hello, 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 hello. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. Yeah, Bright Sparks tutoring. So if it's your first time watching or you've been watching and you still haven't subscribed, guys, please hit the subscribe button. Please like, please comment, and yeah. Okay, so let's get started. So today we're doing all three grades. We're doing grade 10, 11, and 12. And the only reason for this is because we're doing the combined, like it's a skill section. It's like those important things that you need to know to be able to pass your tests and exams. Actually, not just pass, but ace, you know? So yeah, you know, have you ever had that feeling like when you writing a test or whatever, you're like, yeah, I'm killing this. You're like, yeah, I know all these answers. You're like, oh my word, you even get home, you'd be telling your mother, like, mom, that test went so well. You're like, yeah, for question two, I was like, the answer is anaphase. And you're like, yo, I drew the diagram. But then when the marks come back, you're like, hi, boo, Johnny. Yeah, so... I hope by the end of this video you'll be able to understand why you get certain things wrong even though you thought they were right so let's do this okay so the first thing that we're going to tackle is diagrams so you know they may ask you to draw like diagram of a plant cell or the diagram of mitochondria and stuff like that and then you'll be out here drawing and stuff and you label and you do whatever you want no you don't do that you know there's rules and there's certain ways to draw the diagram because as much as your diagram might be right you're gonna lose marks if you do certain things that aren't right all right so this is our diagram as you can see there's a title at the bottom don't leave it out this is so important and it goes at the bottom not at the top not this side not that side at the bottom and just underline it they didn't do it here but you do it and use a ruler and don't be like me yeah <laughs> so with you with your labels you can see they're straight right they're not just like hand drawn like this they use a ruler that is very important use your ruler use your ruler or else you're gonna lose marks for neatness like i know teachers hate it when you don't use a ruler so use a ruler and it's always on one side guys i would really advise you to always keep it on one side unless someone's dying then you can label this side but don't do it don't do it don't don't do it <laughs> yeah always label on one side and then you see here you know they did this thing where they took it up and then the bottom do that if maybe the thing you're looking for is not necessarily in line with where you want your label to be i would advise you to do this and also if you want to make your life science teacher angry and like hate you then make these lines cross like i dare you guys just take label this for example and just like make it cross like that oh my word wow that is a deadly sin don't do it don't do it the lines must never cross each line has to be individual not touching another line not crossing another line just always do it like that and then another thing while we're still on diagrams please don't shade your diagrams please don't make the lines like soft little lines it's it's not art you literally just have to draw it like as as is straight solid lines using your pencil you can't draw with a pen so yo it's so important that on the day of the test or exam you make sure that you check that you have your pencil and it's sharp because you you can't use a pen you can't that's like that's like wow that's like a deadly life science and don't do it yeah so just remember that and yeah i think i think that's it for diagrams so just remember that okay the next thing we're going to talk about is the long question okay so if you're in grade 11 and grade 12 you've probably seen this a thousand of times it's always and i mean always even if it's snowing even if it's hailing even if the examiner woke up in a bad mood the long question will always be question four always 
always in an exam i'm not sure about like school tests and something but in an exam the long question always has to be question four so we're talking about question four now basically the long question which is out of 20 marks so many people often make the mistake that they think this is like an english or an afrikaans or is it zulu or whatever like language you you do they think that it's that type of essay where you have to write an introduction and you have to write the body and you have to write the conclusion and you have to make it in nice little paragraphs no no <laughs> don't do that guys don't do that this long question is basically like you writing down a lot of points uh, my teacher in high school always used to tell me that she wants it in point form if she dares sees it in paragraph form she will just look at it and not mark it so yeah just just write it out in point form like sentences you know write your sentences out next point sentence write it out next point you don't have to now write in this essay i am going to talk about photosynthesis photo no don't don't do that just write like just write photosynthesis you write photosynthesis happens in the chloroplasts next point you know just make it like that so that it's easy for the examiner to mark they don't now have to search for points because they don't have time they they they, they want to finish marking so just remember that and you have to have 17 points basically the question is out of 20 but you have to have 17 points because the other three points well marks are for synthesis therefore your style and i think therefore yeah i forgot the third one but you don't have to worry about those other three marks your marker determines how much you get based on the essay you wrote so if you wrote an essay uh, uh like i'm calling it an essay but it's not an essay if you wrote a long question that is only this much with like five points you definitely aren't getting three out of three you know you'll probably get like two or one so the better your your points are the higher the chances of you getting those three marks so just keep that in mind and then okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is a table it seems weird a table yeah but some people do make this mistake and it would be nice if no people make this mistake because it's pretty easy marks so yeah when you draw when a question asks i mean um tabulate the differences for example between mitosis and meiosis right that's your question the question will count like the mark will be an odd number yeah <laughs> i'm just trying to remember my grade 2 numeracy okay the question will be an odd like the mark allocation will be an odd number the reason being is because the extra mark is for the way you drew your table you know if you actually drew a table so you get a mark for just drawing the table and writing mitosis meiosis you get a mark for that and weirdly some people don't do that they don't tabulate they just write the differences out so yeah okay so what you need to be you need to make sure of i don't, i know some people may know this but some people don't so if you're talking about the differences of mitosis and meiosis say now you say um mitosis is a uh, is it, it does not reduce the chromosome number whereas you say mm, meiosis halves the, the chromosome number like whatever you talk about whatever you're pointing out as a different has to correspond you can't be like my mm, mm, meiosis um reduces the chromosome number and then you talk about how mitosis only has one phase you know like the things have to it has to be the same characteristics that you're pointing the differences out of yeah so you lose a mark basically if you i mean although it's still differences yes mitosis has one phase and meiosis has two phases i mean and meiosis is a reduction division but because you're not pointing out a difference in the same characteristic you will lose this mark i know it sounds weird maybe if you don't do this but some people do do it and they often get it wrong so 
yeah i'm just like saving that those people from doing that okay so now we're going to be talking about data representation okay maybe if you're in grade 11 or 12 you probably know this better but if you're in grade 10 yeah just just you really need to know this because a life science exam will always ask you to represent data in some sort of way whether it's a bar graph whether it's a histogram whether it's a line graph or whatever you know they'll they'll always ask this so you kind of need to know two important variables and that is your independent variable and that is your dependent variable you need to know this because um you're gonna represent these two variables in a graph so stay tuned okay so the independent variable is the variable that you can change like the variable that the person doing the experiment can change and um can also control but this is not always the case but yeah so just keep that in mind and then the dependent variable is the one that is being measured is the one that changes as a result of the independent variable being changed so the reason why these two variables are so important is that when you're drawing your bar graph or your line graph or your, hist or your histogram you need to know which variable to put where because if you put your variables wrong your graph is going to be wrong and you're going to get zero and that's not nice right okay so i'm just gonna show you where each variable is supposed to go all right so we have our line graph here and then i'm going to use this to be able to show you where the independent and the dependent variable goes so okay just to start off for those of you who don't know sorry this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis Okay, so the x-axis, this axis over here, as I've just like scribbled over here, this is where your independent variable will go. And just a little clue or a little hint that should help you. Whenever they speak about time, as I've underlined here, most of the time, most of, I'm not saying all the time, but almost all the time, time is well, almost all the time time anyway almost all the time time is an independent variable because that is often the thing that the person will change like maybe for this thing it will be 30 seconds for this thing it's going to be 60 seconds so yeah time is mostly the independent variable and then the thing that is measured for as i said earlier in this case it's amount of urine produced is going to be on the y-axis which is where the dependent variable goes and now while we're on this it's always important to show your 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 units whether it's hours whether it's days whether it's weeks whether it's you always have to show it you show it like this in a little bracket and here as they've done unit produced showing that it's measured in milliliters because the person reading the graph needs to know what your unit of measurement was so even if they wanted to redo this whole experiment they could be able to compare their results with your results and then something that is so 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 important your the spaces like your intervals they have to be the same you can't make maybe this one 0 to 30 and then you make this one 30 to 50 and then this one you're like nah 60 to 7 no it has to be the same as you can see here it's 0 30 60 90 it's in intervals of 30 minutes and even here it's 100 200 300 400 you can't make it 100 and then the next one you make it 220 just because you had 220 milliliters no you have to make it equal intervals this may sound small but a lot of people do make this mistake and they lose marks because of that and also the 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 distance has to be the same you can't use maybe one centimeter for to indicate the difference between 100 um, milliliters and 200 milliliters and then the difference between 200 and 300 you use now two centimeters no you can't do that you have to like use the same scale all the time 
right something else that i realized that i've got is the title you always have to have a title always always you get a mark for it i mean always and the title has to have um has to be a combination of the dependent and the independent variable where you speak about production of urine as you see here urine produced talk about production of urine uh urine and time after drinking water you see drinking water drinking water so it's basically going to be a combination of these two and then you just like structure it out in a sentence guys you get a mark for this and you get a mark for the fact that the title includes both variables so don't lose this mark okay thank you so much for tuning in i really hope that helps and i really hope that you guys will ace your tests and exams for any comments questions feel free to drop them on the comment box and i will gladly respond thank you and don't forget to like subscribe and share with all your friends and just yeah help everyone out thank you bye